Good morning. Turn some lipstick on. Good morning, everyone. How are you? All right, got my notes ready. We are gonna have a chat this morning about 10 things that changed my life. And when I say changed my life, it changed my life, okay? I go by these 10, I mean, no, actually it's six, it's not 10, it's six. It was 10, but the last four I'm not gonna go through because those are kind of personal. But um, the first six I am gonna go through because I think if it can bring me out of where I came from, it can definitely bring somebody else. I'm just a natural human like everybody. So the first one that we are going to go over is have an open mind about everything but be attached to nothing. And I'm gonna give you scenarios with each one of them so you kind of get an understanding of what I'm trying to say. When I say have an open mind to everything, most people are so close-minded to other people and how they live their life, how they maneuver through life because it's not the way they move or maneuver and then they gain certain feelings and emotions behind it towards that person, which is wrong because if you don't want to be judged, then you don't need to be judging nobody else. Everybody's walk of life is different. Everybody. That's the first one. Second one, you cannot give what you don't have. I was in a relationship 17 years giving love that I did not have. I didn't know how to give love. I didn't know how to show love. I don't even know how it lasted that long, but you cannot give what you do not have. And it's not just with love. That's with money, time. Like, you can't give the club 90% of the time of your time and expect the 10% that you put in your household to run correctly because it doesn't. You know what I mean? So you can't give what you don't have. So I think a lot of people have issues with that. You know, if you don't have it, you don't have it. That's it. You are the first person, you and your family are the first people you should be looking out for. All right? So if you don't got it to give, and that's with anything, then don't give it. All right? So the third one, oh, this one is a very, very special one. And I'm going to tell you a little story with this one, okay? And the third one is, there are no justified resentment. I know a lot of people are going to have a little bit of trouble with this. That's why I'm going to give you a story to help you understand what this means and what I'm saying. So there is no justified resentment. So it was a school teacher and she had like 20 students in her classroom and they were all good students except for one and he came to class he slept all day um, he never did his work um so he was like a, the child that just wasn't getting along with every, all the other kids so this was the child she never wanted to pay attention to this was the child that she stayed away from and she honestly admitted to herself that this the reason she didn't give this child attention is because he seemed like he didn't want it like he wasn't getting attention at home so she didn't want to give it to him either so it came to a point to where they had like they had to do history on all of the kids and where they come um like their grade like i guess they look from the first grade to where they were where he was at that time and you know how he was so his first grade teacher said this was an excellent student he was great, always smiled, very loving child. Second grade student said the same. Second grade teacher said the same thing. Loving student, very bubbly, always smiling. Third grade student, um, mom has been diagnosed with cancer um, and his spirits are starting to come down as a third grade teacher, okay? Fourth grade teacher, mother has passed. Student has completely cut off from life. He come to school and it's just a blank stare and is suggesting counseling. Counseling was never um, given. So now he's in her class and now she understands the full picture, okay? Now she understands why it is. So she went to school the next um, day and she had told all the kids, it was like Christmas time, so all the kids brought her a gift. 
Well, he brought her, and they had it all nice and pretty wrapped with their parents, probably wrapped and everything, but he didn't have that. The dad that he was staying with wasn't really a good um, dad. His mom was really the sole um, provider. So um, he brought the teacher in a gift, and it was a bracelet that had some rhymes. And she opened it so proud, because mind you, she just read the report, and now she understands why he's in the stage that he was in at that time. And um, oh, I just love the story. But um, so long story um, short, so she opened a present in front of everybody, and all the kids was laughing. But she was so happy to open his present. He gave her a bracelet with some rhinestones missing, and a, like a quarter filled perfume bottle that was a quarter filled. And um, because that's all he had, and he had it wrapped in a little paper bag. So she unwrapped it so happy. She put a bracelet on. She sprayed herself with perfume, and she told him that was the best gift that she had got. So from there, she got a smile. She got a smile out of him. And um, she started to work with him a lot more. You know, she started to work with him a lot more. She started to understand that, you know, she wasn't teaching until she, he taught her how to teach. So long story short, they started to um, get together, you know, so he had to graduate out the class or whatever. So six years after he graduated out the class, he wrote her a note and he wanted her to know that he had graduated high school and that she was still his best um teacher and um so after that she he wrote him four years later told him that she was he's in college he graduated with honors top of his class and that he was going back to school to be an md wrote her again six years later um and this time when he wrote her he had a full name with md behind it and um and still said that she was his favorite teacher so then the next time she um the next time I get choked up with the story all the time but so the next time um he wrote her he was writing her saying that he had met a lady and um that they was getting married and his father had passed away and that he wanted her there to in his mom's place basically and she was so 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 happy to to be that one in the mom's place, she was just so, 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 so happy. And um, so she showed up to the wedding with the bracelet on, with the bits and rhinestone she never threw away. And she smelled like the perfume and he recognized it. And um, he gave her a big hug and he was like, you know, you still the best teacher that I've ever had. And she whispered, and she grabbed him and whispered in his ear. She's like, no, I'm not. She was like, you are the best teacher that I've had because I didn't know how to teach until you taught me how to teach. So the moral of that story is we are not here to judge each other. We're not here to be jealous of each other. We have to learn how to accept things and move on. Okay, you got to put your big girl panties on, your big boy panties on. You have to, this was a hard one for me. So let me, let me get, let me specifically say that this one was a hard one for me. Because I, I wore a lot of my emotions on my shoulders. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad this was one that I needed to learn and I had to learn. Okay, to get to the next step or the next phase in life. So, um, the moral of that story is, is. You never know a person's background, where they come from, why they are acting out. You just do. You don't know. It's a reason that a person is acting out. People just don't act out for just no reason. Even if that reason was from childhood or or from yesterday, people act out for a reason. So they deserve to be heard, even if you don't agree with them. They deserve to be heard and always stay positive. The only way you can fight anger to not cause friction is love. You can't do anger and anger. Uh huh. You 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 just you can't. So that one was number three. So number four. This one is very very important too. Do not die with your music still in you without singing your song. What I mean by that is. Do not leave the earth without doing what you want to do. Stop living for other people. Stop providing for people that you do not need to provide for. We are all grown adults. If you can walk and talk and, and live, you can do the same thing that I'm doing. 
you know, you could change your life. I had a rough life. That's another story I tell you in another video. But I had a rough life too. I don't blame anything on anything. Excuses are for dummies. You have to take responsibility. On, I don't care if, if, if whatever happened in your childhood is your responsibility to take responsibility of what happened because if you let someone else take the responsibility of what happened then you're gonna have that lingering on your life the rest of your life but if you take responsibility of the issue and throw it away and say i'm done with it you have sole priority of that situation and you're done okay and be done with it but don't leave the world without singing your song do everything you want to do just do it. If you want to be whatever you want to be, just do it. It's a reach away. It takes from a plan. First, you got to plan it out, okay? And just work at the plan every day. If you work at it every day, we go to a job every day and we spend between 8 and 12 hours at the job. Well, I don't, but I'm just, I used to, though. And we spend at least 8 to 12 hours at that job giving them our time and energy. If we put, and that's why they are millionaires, Okay, but if we put that same time and energy into what we want to do, you'll be me in that too. If you sold something for one dollar and a million people bought it, you are a millionaire. It is several ways to become a millionaire. And newsflash, most millionaires never graduated high school and never went to college. Remember that. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to number five. Oh, this is a great one. A lot of people are going to have a hard time. I used to have a hard time with this one, too. And that's embracing silence. That, to me, is so important to be able to be calm in the midst of the storm. I think that is so important to be calm in the midst of the storm because, uh, or the mix of the chaos. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be able to center yourself back because, in reality, doesn't matter what goes on you still got to deal with it and you still got to keep living so instead of focusing on why this happened to me why am i going through this just find a solution that's it just find a solution to the problem instead of soaking in what is going on okay that's gonna hurt you even more so embrace silence is like meditation to me I'm working on 20 minutes in the, door in, the, in the morning and 20 minutes at night. Now, I'm not telling you just go off and start meditating, but I am saying if you don't meditate, you need to start researching what meditation is, start learning the different breathing techniques and all of that stuff. I think it's very, very important for me. It's very important. I believe God is within, so the only way to connect with that person within that talk to you 24 7 and now you can't say that you don't get them voices during it okay do this or that gut feeling okay that is that's god but that's a whole nother um video um too but so number five embrace silence so that you you can connect if you embrace silence then you connect like that's a whole nother um video so embrace silence meditate if you can and if you don't know how to do it learn how to do it um, so number six, so number six, I, I, I worded it this way, but let me specify what I'm trying to say. So it says, give up your personal history, not your history as a black, white or whatever, uh, um, ethnicity you are, you know what I mean? So not saying that what I'm saying is give up your history. When I say give up your history, I mean your past. Whatever happened in your past, let it go. You cannot open new doors with old keys. Let it go. Give it up. Fuck it. Keep it up. Chop the deuces up and keep it moving. Okay? If you ain't, if the, if the door didn't open with the key that you was using, it's time to self-evaluate and make yourself another key and try that shit again. That is what it's, it's, it's time to do. Okay. All right. I'm almost to the shiz up. Okay. Got a couple clients for the day. And um, I'm off to the races. All right. You guys.
guys have a wonderful, wonderful, awesome day. Peace, love, and happiness as always. You guys stay safe. And oh, somebody was texting me. Good morning. This is the, okay. All right. So, yeah. Peace, love, and happiness. Have a great day.